Dennis, uh, you're being uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame, uh, great honour for, for you. A lot, of ben, a lot of people in Ireland don't realise that an Irishman has had played a pivotal role in the history of the internet as we know it. I remember you telling me one time uh, it was you were working in America and you were working on a choice between OSI and a technology known as TCP IP. Tell us about that time. How did you, how did you happen to be in the States at a pivotal time in the history of the internet? Yes, I was involved in the early days of, of the internet. Um, I was invited by some American friends to go to the US. They were interested in hiring a director of CSNet, the Computer Science Network. And I went to the States and I interviewed for that. And while I was there, I was also suggested I talk to the National Science Foundation, who were looking for a a program director for networking for the supercomputer program. So I was interviewed for that. And at the heel of the hunt, I got both offers of both positions and I decided that the NSF net one sounded a bit more interesting and a little more having more impact so I chose that. Uh, They considered me because I'd already established a bit of a name for myself in networking, academic networking in Europe. So I joined the National Science Foundation as their first program director for networking. Now that role was to build a supercomputer access network. The National Science Foundation had been given the responsibility by the US Congress to spend about $500 million, which is a lot of money in 1983-84, on four new supercomputer centers to give US engineers and scientists access to supercomputers. So they wanted to build a network, they needed somebody to to direct that up uh, activity, and eventually they hired me based on my reputation from Europe. And what was it that made you select TCP IP over OSI? What was the what was the the what made you make that decision? Well, fundamentally, OSI was immature at the time. Although there were laws in the states uh, mandating open systems interconnection, in fact, the protocols hadn't been developed. So when we looked at, at building a network, and we did eventually decide on TCP IP, and I made that decision. The, what we said was, in five years or so, we would make a transition to ISO OSI. So I'll come back to that in, in, in a while. But the bigger question is why we chose TCP IP. And the answer is simply that when I looked at the problem of providing uh, um, access to supercomputers or from supercomputer users to supercomputers, I realized that I had to build a network of networks, not a single network. The, the idea of bin, building one network that reached from each of the supercomputers to each of the researchers didn't scale. So I had to build a network of networks that would be the campus networks at the lowest level to, to support the researchers, regional or mid-level networks to connect them all together, and then a backbone network to connect uh, the supercomputer centers and everybody else together. So a three-level model. So. That was one of the first fundamental decisions. The, the next decision was, or maybe even before the, the, the layering decision, was that I persuaded the National Science Foundation that we could build a general purpose network rather than a specific network for supercomputers. And the argument went like this. You're trying to encourage use of supercomputers by all the science and engineering community, so let's build a network for all the science and engineering community, community to access supercomputers. So we were building a general purpose network of networks, which is what is an internet. So when you're building a a network of networks, and when you're trying to get an individual workstation on one network to talk to a supercomputer center across a series of of multiple networks, that is internetworking. And to do that, you need a protocol, a networking protocol, that enables that communication. So it couldn't be DECnet. DECnet is a networking protocol, or MFENet, which was used by some of the supercomputers, or IBM SNA. It had to be an internet working pro- protocol, and the only one that was available at that time was TCP IP. Now, although it's self evident when you approach it like that, that was not an easy decision because most of the people were on networks, were using existing protocols, and were very happy with them. And wanted to stay, particularly with DECnet. And at that time, in 85, when I was in the National Science Foundation, TCP IP protocols and their implementations were pretty poor. So the battle was to persuade people that yes, indeed, we were building a real network of networks, an internet, we needed an internet networking protocol, 
and the only one that fitted the bill was TCPIP. And so I became known in 1985 in Washington as Mr. TCPIP. Now, coming on to the OSI question, the idea was that we'd still transition in due course to ISO OSI. And in fact, over time it became clear that ISO OSI was never going to be a replacement for TCPIP. They never developed the connectionless protocols in the way that were required to build a network like, like an internet. So it just didn't work out. And there's a whole story about that which is a European story, not an American story.